The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted two charts from last week when we had Stan Harley as our guest. The first one was with Lucas numbers. If you know, they're a little slightly different than the Fibonacci numbers. Stan likes them quite a bit. If you notice, that uh, chart was, I believe, a 130-day Lucas number set. The one I posted right after it was a Fibonacci set, and you notice they had one on the 10th and another on the 12th, and we had one on the 12th today. So whether that's going to mean very much on the long term, I'm not sure. But all I know is, folks, that uh, these numbers, when they do hit, you got to pay close attention to them. And we've had some tremendous volatility today, folks. Uh, the Dow Jones uh, ran up to 4,100, dropped 400 points down to uh, 3,700 or something like that, and now is rallying back to almost a Fibonacci retracement of that, up 150 on the day. So this could certainly be a breakout day for stocks, and it looks like it's moving in that direction. We also have crude oil up $2 a barrel, look $2.5 a, a barrel, a breaking out of that long-term uh, consolidation that was at $82 a barrel, and, of course, we're seeing the same thing in uh, natural gas, not natural gas. That's moving down, which is good. And then also we have uh, crude oil uh, going up, heating oil going up, and also uh, gasoline going up. So those are the ones that we're watching here today. Folks, I get asked all the time because, you know, I post the AI program that I do uh, all the time. It's only right about 60% of the time, but sometimes, you know, it lines up really great. And I'm going to walk through this today here. By the way, Rich Anderson is supposed to be our guest here uh, today. Al, if you could get Rich on the line and we could get him on uh, sometime this morning before we have Mike Moore on at 1.30. I forgot to alert uh, Rich. He knows he's coming on, but here was the uh, here was the setup we were looking at this morning. Uh, in the uh, crude oil, I wanted to get this up here. Oh, God, Larry. In the um, Treasury bonds, this high that we made right here, I want to show it to you and walk through the sequence of what really happened here today because this was one of those times where it fit absolutely uh, perfectly. Here, oops, let's get this up here. <laughs> one thing at a time, Larry, one thing at a time. <laughs> okay, here is a rep, and I actually was watching these uh, quite a bit today. I didn't get a chance to get these sold for the 24-7. Um, they didn't reach the level. They missed it by two pips, the exact 61% retracement. But look what happened on the way down, folks. You had a 382 here, you had a 382 here, and you've got a bottom that's supposed to be coming in, you know, right about this level right here. And and look, look what happened to just a few minutes ago. I mean, it's just truly amazing to me that this thing did exactly what it was supposed to do. And I will get it up here so you can see it because this may or may not mean something, but the fact that it's holding up so nicely, it's really, it's great. But when it doesn't work and when it doesn't work, you get out of the, get out of Dodge. And we've got our main man in the house, Mr. Rich Anderson. Rich, how are you doing this morning? I good, Glory. You how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, my friend. Listen, you sent me a chart here about large speculators. I'm going to post it into the den here, and I'd like for you to tell the folks uh, what this means and what the outlook for this, this chart means, because it's got a lot of ramifications. And what what do you see in this chart here about the large specs, Rich? Well, I mean, basically, uh, large specs are reportable positions, and it depends uh, it's a different amount of contracts depending on the market, you know, like, Mm -hmm. Cattle and hogs, it might only be six hundred contracts and it's bigger S and P's and stuff like. That. Anyway, the large specs have larger short positions. As you can see, since what two thousand two thousand eleven, I'm not mm -hmm. my computer. Two thousand twelve, and and you'll see that all courts, you know, on one side of the boat, they don't get the news that 
you know, breaks the uh, the dam and the water starts flowing, they're going to be buyers, you know, you know cover. Okay. So you you always have to be very careful when you see and you see and you see if you look at the chart that there was those conditions. Dam didn't necessarily break and and it didn't flood and then uh, you know then you get uh, out of the market in the other. Direction. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a, a year, year and a half ago, Reddit stock bankrupt and going to zero. All of a sudden, yeah. all these people short and somebody starts. So that's got to be aware of. Now, they, 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 right, I mean, these are the smartest guys. These are the funny and smartest guys. If it doesn't go their way, you know, they'll run quick. Okay. All right. That's so all I want to know. You just got to be aware, of, you know. Okay. Now, one, one so, other uh, question. These are the smart guys. Uh, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Question about the grains. Uh, we got some strength in soybeans today. Are uh, what, are you still think that you're still friendly to the beans? I know you were a couple of weeks ago. They still look like they're moving higher. What, what's your opinion? Right. And I was friendly with crude oil a couple of weeks ago, and it looked like yes, it was sir. A pretty you good flat call. out were. So, yeah, um, so. And the soybeans. Yeah. Now they can plant soybeans into probably the first week in July. But right now. You know, like North Dakota, they're planning on 800,000 more acres this year. Well, you know, right now, you've you got to get the snow banks out of the fields first. Then you got to get the ground warmed up. You, you know, it'll be questionable that they'll get 800,000 more acres out of North Dakota. Um, it, 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 the corn has to be planted first. Um, you know, I think there's going to be a challenge to getting this stuff planted and there'll be uh, some prevent plant stuff. And, and that's, you know, that's the friendly part. The, the negative part is that Brazil's having this record crop, although Argentina's mm-hmm. having the worst crop since, what, 2000 mm-hmm. in both their corn and their soybeans. So, you know, you, you've got two sides of the coin. Um, and, and then, they, you know, the wheat crop is being pretty, you know, even though we got plenty, a lot of moisture here the last three weeks, there's still like 36% of the, the uh, red, <coughs> or these um, hard red winter wheat that's uh, – Poor to very poor, and so we got to keep it. This is a time of the year when the weather matters. And so I've told you for years, whenever the farmer starts to put his money in the ground by planting the seed and the fertilizer, mm-hmm. that's when the markets get sensitive. So I don't think there's any straight <coughs> up, but you know, I, I would, you know, I'd be careful about the short side until after the middle of July, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. So, okay, listen. That's what I'm thinking. All right, listen, thanks, buddy, for calling in, and we appreciate it, and keep those cards and letters coming in. We'd like to hear what you're doing. All righty, you take care. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. You bet. Rich Anderson, folks, of Anderson Capital Management, always gives us some great ideas and stuff to look at. Mike Moore is going to be our guest at the break, folks, of more analytics. And remember, he told us about crude oil about four and a half weeks ago that it was going higher and higher it comes. It's uh, end of the stretch today with about uh, $2 a barrel on the pus slide. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart of the... Um, Let's make sure I posted the right one. The silver chart. It's an hourly silver chart. And what I wanted to show you here is the fact if you'll notice this long period of where the market was making a consolidation, we talked about that, that it had some really bullish uh, implications. And that is, in fact, what has happened today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this chart out of the way, and we're going to get another one up here to show you what actually happened with the silver because it tells us a really interesting story about the US dollar gaining uh, strength for a while today and then bada bing bada boom out of the blue comes the report and everything changed the dollar goes into the sewer and guess what happens silver starts to back off you will see we got up to here almost to twenty six dollars uh, an ounce Remember down here we were trading around 24, 20, or 24, 24 here, 25 here, and what we've done now is we've reversed back down again, folks. We were long the gold today. Of course, we raised our stop up to protect a nice profit. But you know, when the dollar weakens like this, uh, you know that <laughs> it should be good for the gold. But by golly, that's not what what happened. So what we're going to do now is wait and see what the next pullback in gold is going to be. Um, so that's all we're doing here is when we had this big breakout to this level, then pull back and go below it. What that means is that everybody bought it during these days right here, these these five days where open interest was basically uh, staying the same. There was no new buying coming in here, a tiny bit, and then you know some selling, so there was nothing. And now everybody that's long from you know these higher levels now looks like great on this breakout, but now it's below the breakout level, and that's a, that's a pretty tough... Uh, you know, that's pretty tough to see how it uh, works, you know. <laughs> anyway, I hope that helps. You know, we'll, we'll see it, see how that works and we'll go from there. Okay, now let's move on to a few other things that, uh, that I think were very important here today because we've had this huge move here. I want to show you the NASDAQ. If you remember, we were talking about the NASDAQ yesterday. And, of course, with the big news that we had today, we completed, I haven't updated it yet, but I know we made it up to the 78% level up in here. We might even be going higher than that right now, but uh, we did get up to this level uh, earlier. Then we backed off, 
uh, quite a bit, and then we're back up here again. So this is a very, very active day in the market with huge volatility. I mean, we've seen volatility here that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. So we want to remind ourselves that um, when we get this, we got to take advantage of it because we don't see that all the time. Uh, Rich was kind enough to come on and talk to us about the soybeans because we've had the soybean position on uh, for about uh, seven or eight days now. It looked like it was going to be stopped out. Now it's moving, you know, in our favor, uh, quite substantial. So that makes me feel uh, very good about that. But I wanted to bring this one up to you because this was really important what happened yesterday and then also today and even last night. I want to get this up here and just to show you uh, where we are here. You'll you'll see here we we went through this level like it didn't even exist uh, later l last night and late, late yesterday actually. And we went above it by quite a bit. And then we went all the way up to uh, 30, uh, instead of 33,900, we got to 30, uh, 34,100. And we're trading it right around uh, 34 right now. So we have cleaned out all of this uh, resistance that was here. And then we broke 400 points, and then we've come back. That's a sign of a very strong market, folks. So I would be very, very uh, skeptical about staying too bearish this. Uh, the only thing that would turn this down is if we roll over today and close down on the day. I know there's only, uh, what, two and a half hours to go, but that's possible, but not very probable. So we need to watch how these markets react because they are extremely volatile. They follow the number sequences really good, but when you have days like today, you know, it's really it's really bonkers. Look at this one here today, folks. This was this was the order that I had this morning uh, for the 24/7 folks. I tried let's let's get it up here right, Larry, so everybody can see it. Hold on a second. Now I've got uh, Mr. Mike Moore coming on pretty soon. Oh, dear. I hope this will do it. I think it will. Let's get it up here. Yes, this is it. Okay, this was the S&P. I sent it out last night, and I said we got a really good chance to get up to this level here, which was 41.55. And I said there's also a chance that we could go all the way up here to match that high that we made back here just a few days ago, five, six days ago. Remember that big? 61% retracement. In fact, we went above it by two points. That was at 41.72. We made a high today at 41.75. From 41.75, we dropped 50 handles all the way down to 40.25, and now we're back up here again. So we're having tremendous volatility. Yesterday's low was right at a 3.82 retracement. But more important than that, if you're watching the this, this stuff intraday like I am during you know, uh, days like today where we're having a great deal of vol volatility, I like to see uh, if we can find A, B, C, D patterns amongst the things that we're looking at. So all I'm doing here, and I'll show you, this was something that I posted because I, I didn't post it. I meant to, but I couldn't get the, the, the video to work. There was the high. There was your 382 retracement, and there was your perfect ABCD retracement right here, folks. That was, believe it or not, that was uh, 22 handles on the way down, and now we've rallied back up to the 60. Well, we're up here to the 78% level now, I believe. And how high did we get? Uh, I think we got to the 618, maybe a little bit higher. But that's what we're watching here today, tremendous volatility. And uh, that's what we like to see when we uh, watch these markets move you know, every day. It's, it's very, very important that we, that we watch how these things are going to uh, come, come and go as, a, as we do our trading here uh, during the day. Now, I wanted to bring one other thing to your attention, and this is very important. This old cowboy was four and a half years ago to the day. We had an old cowboy become a student of ours and uh, became quite, well, he was famous beforehand, but this was the day that I met Cy Monley, folks, back in March of uh, 2016. That was what? Was that five years ago? Holy cow. Can't be that long. Uh, no, it's five years. Anyway, uh, this is where sugar was right here. And he had, a, he had a farmer that had a quarter of a million acres of sugar, and they were talking about $40 sugar. 
And I, you can't see the whole chart here because it's only part of it. I just put the date in. But if you went back, you'd see that that price right there was a 382 retracement. Uh, remember, the old-time high in sugar was 66, way back in 1968. And that was also a 61% retracement of the high from uh, 2009, I believe, or 2010. There were so many numbers there that, that you had to put a, a mathematician on it. And I told him, he said, it'll never go. He said, it'll never Never see $24. Uh, not now. He said, it'll go to 40 then maybe 24 And I said, look, I said, would you humor me? I said, if you could sell the sugar here at 25 and then if it doesn't go down, you could buy it back at 26 But if it does go down, you'll save a lot of money. He said, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, if it works, he said, I'll study under you. He said, if it doesn't work, I won't. And it turned out that he's been a good friend and a student all these years. And uh, he handles two and a half million acres of farmland, folks. Are you kidding me? Shut the front door and raise the rent. We'll be right back. Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn, with Mike Moore of More Analytics. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we've got Mr. Crude Oil on the line and in the house. Mike Moore of More Analytics told us two and a half weeks ago it was going to go a lot higher. Congratulations, my friend. It's Thank still you, sir. Going higher it. to this day. So please tell us what you're looking at from now on. All right. So I guess we'll start with crude then. And we can jump over to natural if you like. Uh, yeah, this take is your, a take your can time. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Oh, you're coming in perfect. You're not as good looking as me, but you're younger. This is important. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. All right. So um, this is crude oil May contract. On uh, 327, we left a bullish reversal below. That was 
right here, which we talked about on the last show. And the chart's not coming up yet. What's that? The chart's not coming up yet. Can you see it now? Uh, not yet. It's not coming up. No, uh, we'll have to keep trying. Uh, try this one more time. I'm sorry. Okay. Here it comes. It's coming now. I can see the Skype picture coming up and stuff, so we should be in good shape. Can you see it now? Okay. We're in business, so let's keep on going. Okay. So we said on uh, 327, we left a bullish reversal below. We've seen $11.17 from that and more than that uh, this morning. Uh, this was written earlier on. Uh, the trade above 74.54 projected this upward. We've seen over, over $7.27 of that. And then the trade above 78.97, which we spoke about on uh, the last interview, I believe, uh, said projects this upward $15. So that's a pretty substantial move um, from 78.97. And we popped up above here. This is where that line came in. We pulled right back down to it, dribbled sideways here, and we're popping higher again today. So, mm -hmm. and this kind of consolidation is not to be unexpected after a big gap higher than that, like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we see decent trade back below 80.47 minus 1.2 ticks per hour, um, that should bring in pressure. But if we fail back down through that main line I just showed you, which came in at 78.43 uh, this morning, then that would, that would have to come down through this. That would be initial pressure. And then this lower one should bring in heavier pressure for days. Mm -hmm. but right now it's looking strong. Um, and then just let me do a higher level recap again with everybody. We've been on a number of times now. I said we were in this long bull trend and we came back mm -hmm. into this bearish corrective pattern, which I said I felt had a higher likelihood of returning to the upside than seeing mm -hmm. a big bear trend. And uh, we came down, we took out all these lows here the other day then came up, made a bullish reversal right in here, and then took all that out. Mm -hmm. And now we're traveling up to take out a lot of this stuff here. So that's um, pretty significant. And like I said, now we're projected up $15. Mm -hmm. uh, do you so want to take a look at the gas or the heat at all? Yes, well? we, want, we, want, we want the whole, the whole <laughs> picture. We want the whole okay. menu. Everybody's asking for it. So if you've got the time, we would like to see it because you've uh, – You've been leading okay. us through this uh, quagmire of uh, charts that look really great. So keep it up. Okay, thank you. Well, the gas, the unleaded gasoline or RBOB, if you want to call it differently, um, the trade above 245.32, warned a decent strength. We've seen 41.5 cents of that so far, and we have <clears throat> other projections that uh, you can read about in here. The mm -hmm. who came just shy of an exhaustion at two. 87.75 with the 286.82 high, but I think we may have taken that out right now. Right, we did. So we're right up into this exhaustion level right in here uh, between uh, 287.75 and 289.83. What does that mean? That means that that could possibly be um, an ending place for this run up prior to a moderate bearish reversal, which would not be huge. Uh, mm -hmm. but maybe to the tune of eight cents or so. And if we take that out, then that's going to open up the upside to even higher trade, likely up to trade 298.63 to 301.99. And uh, the, enter the heating oil has looked quite a bit different than the RBOB and the heat and the RBOB and the crude oil lately. We had broken down below a bearish formation here, came off, came back up to it, tried to hit the stop, couldn't elect it, rolled over again, rolled over again, and now we're holding this bearish formation right here. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm still bearish the heat, even though it's higher on the day. Just technically it's still bearish because it's below these formations. But if we take out this upper one right here, which comes in at, came in at 273.34 minus two ticks per hour at eight o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. Decent break above um, there will project this upward 14 cents minimum, 39 cents plus maximum. I have a question, Mike. Yeah. Is, isn't there a strong seasonal for heating oil to be weak during, uh, you know, April through uh, July? I, well, I, I have a seasonal trends page right here, actually, that's part of the analysis that we haven't really looked at before. 
Um, but right now it says that May is a buy from January 10th through April 15th. So that we're almost at the end of this period right now. Okay. Which to your point may be a more bearish season for it, which makes sense, right? I mean, the heating oil season's yeah. pretty much over. Gasoline season starting starting up. Um, and then if we roll over and take out this formation below, then that'll be bearish. Start seeing pressure come in. If we take out this lower formation, should see even more pressure come in. And just yeah, to look at those cracks, like I said before, these are always important to understand what's going on in the RBOB to heat spread. Yeah. So the RBOB to heat spread tells you which which of those is strong or weak relative uh -huh. to the other. And you can see in just a matter of three weeks, understanding that difference is a difference of you know twelve grand per lot, depending wow. on which one you were long or short. I'd said here that the trade above negative 338 projected this upward for 480 ticks plus. We wound up seeing 2,321 ticks of that so far. Uh, that was from this break down in here, really traveled up. We had a hedge in there in the middle of it also. But basically, that means right now that the RBOB or the unleaded gasoline is strong relative to the heat. That would change with the gap open lower tomorrow. And then after that, you take a look at the heat crack, which is the spread between the heat and the crude. Um, and that has been bearish over the past number of days. However, I do think that we are in the last stretch of this move from here down with possible exhaustion levels at 28.56 and 27.46 to 26.97. And what does that mean? That means that if it holds one of these, we could see a moderate bullish correction, uh, probably to the tune of at least 400 ticks. But presently right now, it means that the heat is weak relative to the crude or the crude strong relative to the heat. I and noticed that gasoline here in Tucson has jumped a dollar a gallon in the last month. We've gone from 308 to 412 uh, <laughs> yesterday for gasoline. So that's a, that's a huge run. <laughs> I'll show you something funny and interesting in gasoline. This was a, a large projection I had. Um, back in 2020 in here. And this is when gasoline was trading. Uh, it was trading a dollar, a dollar 20 a gallon. Mm -hmm. I said that if we broke above this formation, uh, that it would project it up with 30 cents minimum, a dollar 25 plus maximum, and that the maximum could be seen within five calendar months. So that's basically a doubling of the value of the entire contract. Wow. And uh, we saw just about that in five months and then got it eventually in the ensuing months. Um, we got to pay a few bills, my friend, and we'll be right back, okay? Three minutes, and we'll be back with Mike Moore of More Analytics. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back, folks, with Mike Moore at Moore Analytics, and please continue, young man. And also, be sure that you uh, give us a little skinny on natural gas because we've got a lot of people interested. <clears throat> okay, absolutely. Let me just get back to you. Can you see my screen again? Or yeah, it's coming in great. You're you a very okay. pre very pre 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 presentable young fellow, I might add. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, like I said, it's always important to understand what these spreads are doing. You can see in the heating oil, I mean, this is just a difference of nine grand in a matter of two weeks here on the downside, uh, wow. helping you decide, looking at this spread is to, to help you decide whether or not you want to be long or short the crude or long or short the heat. And the same thing with the unleaded gasoline. We left a minor bullish reversal below down here the other day. And just in just a matter of four days, that made a difference of almost four grand to the upside. We failed back down through a formation this morning, though, so currently it's bearish. Um, but those help you weigh, weigh which one of those you should be long or short at any given time. Mm -hmm. So let's jump over to the natural gas. Natural gas, well, Mike, we were talking about. Mike, we, yep. uh, before you do the natural gas, someone's asked a question here from, uh, wow, Ontario, Canada. And the question is, uh, what are the margins on uh, these spreads? I know the uh, margin on the crude oil is around six grand. The spread's got to be in like, what, 25% of that or so? How, how do the, the spreads yeah, work? Yeah, they're, le they're less because you're, you're long one product and short the other. Sure, okay. Uh, I'm not sure right off the bat exactly what they are, but um, they change weekly and depending on okay. volatility. Okay, and I ask one other question here. Uh, this is for me, and that is when you put the spread on, do you put it on, is there a, a contract that shows what the spread is, or do you have to leg into it, you know, long July, short Ds or whatever it is, or can you put it on uh, as a spread? Okay, so this is very important. I think we talked about this, touched on this last yeah. time, but it, uh, and depending I don't remember, on your so. software provider that you are trading through, Either you will be trading the exchange traded spread, which means that you'll actually be trading the spread as a whole, traded as one okay. contract off the exchange, or they're gonna they're gonna leg you into a synthetic spread. And okay. there's a lot of disadvantages in the synthetic spread, but there's also advantages also. I mean, if you're doing a lot of size, mm -hmm. synthetically you're gonna have more liquidity in the outrights than you are in some of these spreads. Like the crack spreads are very thin, okay? Um, but there can be other issues there too. If you have a stop at a certain level, the synthetics could elect a stop that's lower than what the actual exchange prints. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but you have to be careful. Very that. helpful, sure, yeah. But the main thing is, is these spreads, most importantly, are dictating to you which outright you want to be long or short. And also, if you did want to leg into them, you can make a lot of money in the differentials of, of the outrights. Um, okay. 
So right, let's jump to natural gas real quick. Natural gas, we've been in this big bearish slide that we've been talking about for a number of weeks on these weekly charts from the failure back down below this massive formation. Uh, really big move to the downside to the tune of over 30 grand. Uh, but I do think that we are just bounced off of the possible last stage of that. When we talked last time, I'd say we've broken above this line here. And I said oftentimes when they're steep, they'll travel down above it and then go sideways and upwards. And so we've traveled down around and right here we held it again. And this is also a macro exhaustion area at uh, 202.20. Let me just pull that analysis back up. Excuse me. Bear with me here. Uh, yeah, 202.20 is where I had one of these macro exhaustion levels. I said if we, ha if we hold it or the 179.60 to 171.10 area and we start a bullish correction, that bullish co correction could exceed 990 ticks from the low. So we held this with a 199.20 low right here. We started to rally. We took out this formation and this formation, rallied up a bit up here to 224.70, um, attaining 255 ticks. But the failure back below this formation here this morning, which came in at 212.90, now warns of pressure. So I think that this is going to wash right back out to, down towards these lows. Mm -hmm. I need to bounce off them, maybe test below them. But either way, unless this thing really gets hit, this is out of this bearish, you know, trending structure here, now into this sort of sideways structure here that looks maybe yeah. like a consolidation or a base. So we'll really have to see. We might just see some more choppiness in here for the next number of days. It stopped going down, it looks like, at least on a, on a parabolic move to the downside anyway. Yeah, this one's done. But short term right here, I expect this to dump down into here, test this area. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do you want to look at the S and P's or the gold? Oh, or? I, I love it. Let's have a raise our hand. Everybody who wants to see the S and P, raise their hand, and there's lots of hands being raised. So please give us your skinny on this. Okay, S and P 500. Um, just said this morning that I think we may have completed this last run up. Let me see here. Just as a recap. We held uh, exhaustion below with a 39, 39 and a quarter low. We rallied 238.5 mm -hmm. and even a little bit more than that this morning into a bullish trend against the move down from 4208.50. We did not take out 4208.50, though. And then I said in here on a lower time frame, can we just see it? I would caution that we are likely in the last stretch of the lower time frame move up from 38, 39 and a quarter, and we'll be wary of areas of possible exhaustion at 4192, 42.18 and a quarter to 42.23 and a half, and 42.39.50 to 43.02. If any of these hold, the ensuing bearish correction should exceed 75 points from whatever the high is. And I also said that if we break above this high right here, 41.71. 75 and fail back down through it and settle below it, that would be a warning of an early termination of the move up <coughs> and it could also precipitate that move down. So right now we've seen this is 41.77, 75. So that's only about 56 or so handles into a 75 handle move that we would be expecting from the highs. Do you have any explanation of why your prediction was 4175 and came in as 4177? That's two points off, Mike. I mean, I thought it would be exact. 41. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty darn good, my friend, because it broke 50 yeah. handles from that spot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, and also, we got a big bearish formation right below here. So, if we take that out, I came in at 40.96.77 plus 48 per hour this morning. That'll project this downward to 142 handles. Um, okay. And like I said, on, a, on an overall basis, this is still trying to figure out what it's doing right here. Are we starting a whole new bull structure or a whole new bearish structure? The possibility of this being a large pullback within a bearish structure is there. But um, it still hasn't really played itself out yet. Really, it, 
we need a little bit more time for it to show its hand. Any questions on that before I go to gold? No, no, that's good. Gold, yeah, get to that precious metal. They, we love the gold market, so tell us what you're looking at there. Oh, we got it. Oh, my God, where does the time go, for God's sake? Stay with us, Mike. <laughs> we'll take a little break, and then we'll wind up the show. Boy, this is fast. We'll be right back, folks, with Mike Moore, more analytics. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, with Mike Moore, more analytics. Mike, you're going to be with us on the next show, the, the second half hour. Is that correct? Yes, sir. 2.30, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, that two thirty, and I'd like to uh, talk a little bit, a little about the uh, your analytical uh, auto trade program that you have, and then maybe in the second half of the show, to, uh, in the next half hour, we can cover gold and silver, and a couple other things that people have requested. So, do you want to tell us exactly what this auto trade thing works? Because you know we hear different things from different uh, you know commercials and stuff. So, how does this work? I mean, it, can just tell tell me what happens. Well, letter of direction tra uh, trading is, you know, traders that we have that are trading in their accounts and they, they can mirror those trades in your accounts if you want to sign up on a per lot basis. Um, okay. One of them is the spread trading program. For example, this is the RBOB, the unleaded gas front month spread, right? So, for example, I said if we break above this line here, mm -hmm. we should see decent short covering come in and you can see there's you can have some very sizable moves within wow. a short period of time. Big, yeah. uh -huh. And there's other seasonal patterns that are there in the spreads. 
um, when big contracts are rolling that you could take advantage of that are pretty uh, consistent throughout the year. Um, so trade those in the in the automated trade programs, and then also some of the other trades off of the analytics. So there's different programs. There's spread trading programs, bracket trading programs uh, that take advantage of different aspects of the analysis. Mike, I have a question on the next mm -hmm. segment uh, in half an hour. Could you actually pull put up a uh, you know like you're getting ready to execute? the trade and show what the bracket looks like and how you're putting the orders in because it's sometimes on these spread it's different and the folks are not familiar with this so I, I if you could do that it would really be helpful to them and also for me because i haven't done spread since these computers have come out this way i used to do it many years ago but that, that's when you know corn was selling for two dollars a bushel so if you could do that it would really be helpful just to show what your what your trading platform looks like and what you have to click to put it on and then can you put a stop on a spread also hey yes we're gonna answer, yeah. we're gonna answer these questions in the next half hour folks at 2 30 we got some questions written down for mike moore and more analytics and we'll be back with him mike thanks for joining us my friend i'll see you in a half an hour thank you you bet mike moore folks